Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, Everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Hello and welcome to a Voices of Vic podcast with me, Ben Ayton and Mike Duffy. Um, we are back to do a review for the Preston North End game, which um, played out yesterday. Watford drew 0 new away from home at Deepdale. But we're delighted to say that we're joined by our special guest, Charlie, who is the Watford FC Twitter space host, um, and he appears on WD18 as well and Voices Coach as well. Charlie, how are you doing, mate? And thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Um, I've been watching your guys doing your thing on YouTube, so it's, it's good to be on making my debut. Yeah, hopefully two more. You get a match ball as well, so I'm <laughs> sure you'll, you'll appear on here for a couple more appearances. Um, Mike, how, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, good. Um not the most entertaining game to talk about, but yeah, always good to be back on. Uh, I'm really enjoying them at the moment. It's good to be back doing it regularly, like, like the old times, Ben. Yeah, well, this, there's loads of games now, isn't it? Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. I, I, I don't know when our next break is in in between the Saturday and September, Tuesday, unless we lose, unless we lose to uh, Milton Keynes, Don's um, Tuesday, then it might sneak in. But yeah, there's... They're trying to cram in all those games, aren't they? Because of the World Cup building up in um, November, isn't it? It's the middle of November. Uh, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's, it gives us something to talk about. And we've definitely got lots of things to talk about at the moment with Watford, incomings, outgoings, more in- outgoings, more so than incomings. Uh, but we, we'll discuss all of that towards the end of the show. Uh, but we'll jump straight into the Watford news yesterday. Uh, Charlie actually went to the game yesterday, so... It'll be interesting to get his points on some of these topics that we've got. Um, obviously, the team news came out. Um, the starting eleven was Daniel Batman in goal, Christian Cabaselli, Francesca Sirielta, Craig Cathcart, uh, Hassan Kamara came back on onto the right hand side though. Uh, Ken Semmel was on the left. Uh, midfield was Hamza Chowdhury, Adu Kiembi, Yasser Espria, and up front was Bakun Bayo and Ray Manai. Um, Charlie, come to you first. What was your thoughts on the starting lineup? Because obviously we saw pictures of Ismail Asar on the team pop, uh, bus holding a fork uh, with <laughs> KMB and Kamara, and it looked like he was going to be involved, but he wasn't in that starting lineup. But he did travel with the squad, and he was he was sitting behind the, the players on the bench. Uh, what was your whole thoughts on the starting lineup? And was there lots of like negativity maybe coming across in that what the way end when they saw that starting lineup? Yeah, I think there was. I think, although the Saar one was disappointed, obviously we knew he travelled to the game. Um, Rob Edwards has since said that he kind of, he, he wasn't fit. He was going to start, but he wasn't fit. So there was negativity. But for me, I was more disappointed about not seeing Keenan Davis. Um, I thought it was a real, real strange one, considering he came on for 10 minutes against Birmingham, but deemed not fit at all to make the squad. So that one for me was a strange one. I don't know how, how that works. They can be fit for Birmingham and not fit for today. So, yeah, when the team news came through, there was a bit of um, hesitancy or people a bit worried. But, um, you know, we kind of got glimpses of Bio, Manai, their strengths, their weaknesses. Great to see Yasser Espria back in the team, who for me was the best player on the pitch. I kind of came out after a few beers thinking I wanted to tweet how well he was. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going over the top here. Um, <laughs> but then seeing what other people are saying, how good he was for an 18 year old kid. He's literally been here since July. He was outstanding. Um, and then we kind of know Chowdhury was unbelievable. Again, I thought Kayombe, okay. Um, I'm, I'm still struggling with Kamara on the, on the right. You can tell he's a level above the players and, I think there's been four or five occasions this season now he's beaten his man and he's just struggled to put a decent crossing because it's on his right foot. I think 
if we can get him on that left, we can see the best out of him um, and the defence and was pretty solid enough with Backman and another really good performance. So, yeah, a bit, a bit disappointed with the start of 11, but I think we did OK. Yeah, and coming to you now, Mike, with the return of uh, Kamara back over on that right-hand side, does that say to you that Rob Ed- uh, Edwards doesn't really fancy Mario Gaspar at that right wing back? Um, because we've highlighted maybe the pace is an issue on that right-hand side um, when Gaspar does fill in. Do you think Rob Edwards, after seeing his performance at um, Birmingham City, which he, he did a good job, but does he prefer more pace on that side? And do you reckon that he might be in the market to bring in another player to fill in that position so then you can have Kamara back on over on the left? Uh, I really hope we bring another right wing back in. Uh, I, I think Rob alluded to it when he brought when Gaspar was brought in. He said that he doesn't have the legs as some other players would, but he will be an important player to use in the season. Right? You know, a, a lot of people are forgetting this. This guy was captain Villarreal for the last however many years, and they're not a bad outfit. So it's definitely a good player to have in the ranks. But as I say, Rob did allude to the fact that he hasn't got the legs, so he's probably going to be a bit part player. Um, I think the only reason we saw Gaspar come in against Birmingham was because of the suspension for Kamara. So I think Rob wanted to bring Kamara back in because, um, as Charlie said, he is levels above pretty much most players on the pitch. It's just a shame that, as we saw yesterday, when he does get down that side, again, as Charlie said, he, he's struggling to put the crosses in. But um, I think we would be better to get a right wing back in um, because that then it would allow Kamara to play on his natural left-hand side and we maybe would feel more comfortable with a right wing back. Look, we said it on the last podcast, I think, Ben, we've been so used to seeing Kiko and Saar, that sort of partnership in the Championship, and we, we don't have that now. We, we don't have a player that can do that same sort of job. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's that he doesn't fancy him. I just think we have to use him sparingly because of his, because of his age and the system and the way that Rob wants us to play. Yeah, definitely. And it's a long old season. So these players are going to get minutes and they're going to play a vital part this season. Um, Charlie, was you a bit concerned with like the, the squad depth maybe at the moment after looking at that bench as well? The, the bench that we had yesterday didn't really offer anything that could potentially change a game either. I think our, our most attacking threat was um, Joseph Hungbo and you had Shaq Ford thrown in as well, who um, came through the academy and had loan spells at work in Langley last season. But does that just show that... That's areas as well that we need to fill in as well in the squad. Yeah, it's a it's a a real contrast considering the the first set of season with Dennis Saar and uh, Pedro up front, wasn't it? And the excitement of possibility. I think that song came out a bit too early, didn't it? Um, yeah, it was a concern, I think. But one thing, especially with um, Manai and Bio, I know some of the signings have been questions, but. If we didn't have them, we would have had Shaq Ford on, on his own yesterday. So you can see the thinking and kind of the proactive planning for if the departures did happen. Look, I think Rob Rob did say it. we did have injuries to Saar and Pedro yesterday. Mm-hmm. Some people might not believe that, but that's kind of what Rob said. So I'm going to kind of believe him. Um, and yeah, it is a bit of concern. Like I said, we would have liked to see Davis. So I'm really hoping it's just one of those days where we've had loads of injuries and, and that's been the case. I mean, loads of people kind of calling for Shaq Ford to, to get on yesterday. It would have been nice to see that kind of academy graduate get get some games. And um, especially after Manaya's couple of finishes, they wanted to see someone else. So it is a bit concerning, but I, d- I don't think that's going to be a case for the, the season. Um, I just can't wait till sept- September the 2nd when that transfer window shuts so we know exactly what we've got. <laughs> Um, and the one thing I, after you guys talk about the right wing back position one thing I wanted to ask you guys what do you make of Jeremy and Gakia because he's someone who I've always really liked I think he's looked good on the ball he looks good defensively at the championship you think he could do a job and with this system of right wing back I think that would be a good opportunity for him so should, should Gakia be given a chance what do you think of that situation yeah I, I definitely feel you hate, feel hard done by with Jeremy Gakia for him. Um, I feel like every time he gets that opportunity, it gets taken away from him, whether it's a managerial change under Ivic um, or he picks up an injury or Kiko's playing absolutely unbelievable and you can't drop him. And then finally, when his opportunities came along and you think, OK, he's going to have his position this year, Kiko's left, 
he's kind of a couple of weeks behind everyone in pre-season. Um, so he's, he's not featured this season. And then the rumours of the whole city have cropped up. Um, if he gets back to fully fit, I would definitely have him. I would give him a chance at that right wing back. He's not really really been given the opportunity to show how good he really can be at Watford. I think he did that first 10 games under Ivic where his stats were unbelievable, weren't they? I think he came top on every single like duel that he came across. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to give him a go. Mike, what do you reckon? Yeah, I, I think like you said, you know, we, we should at least give him a try and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least we've given him a try and, and found out. But I don't know whether he'd have the attacking prowess to be a wing-back. We know defensively he can do a job in the Championship. As you just said, Ben under Ivic, he was superb those first few games. But is he someone that can really create these sort of attacking moments as well as then dropping back and defending? I don't know whether he's got it in him. But again, to play devil's advocate a bit, we've not given him the chance. I mean, I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up if I saw his name on the team sheet. And I do feel a bit bad he's being frozen out because... Like you said, Ben, the promise he showed when he first came in and we thought, you know, we've got a bargain here. We've just brought in Ngakia from West Ham and I think there were rumours that he was possibly going to Hall. I know they've died down a bit now. I've not heard anything since. But, yeah, feel feel sorry for him, definitely. I, I think he should at least be given a chance, especially with the bench we had yesterday. He'd have been a good option to, to have in case something was to happen to any of the wing-backs. But, yeah, m- maybe Rob's seeing him and, and not fancied him, that, that's got to be the only viable option. And it, it's Rob's, you know, done well so far in terms of picking the best team that he's got at his, at his disposal. And I'll, I'll continue to pack back the team that Rob puts out. One thing yeah, as well, on, sorry, one thing as well, Rob Edwards, which I think he's done really well, apart from kind of the results, he's kind of had this squad at early stage and he's had players like Bayer and Manar. One thing that we know he's massively keen on is building that culture, that togetherness. And I think he's done a really good job to try and keep everyone involved, giving people minutes. Um, I think previously, Manai and Bayo have done well off the bench, closing off games, holding the ball up. So I think that's going to be key for like the bigger picture to have a harmonious squad. And I think that's one thing that Rob Edwards has done really well. Yeah, he's definitely brought everyone together. And that's what we've drastically needed after last season. We didn't see the togetherness. We didn't see the willingness. We didn't see them fighting for each other. And you've definitely seen it this season. Like Watford, yeah, we came away from Preston with a nil-nil draw. We didn't score, but we would have lost that kind of game last season under mm. uh, Roy Hodgson or Claudio Ranieri. Um, under Rob Edwards, there's a, there's a togetherness and they're fighting for the shirt and it's brilliant to see. Um, you've got to remember as well, there's, I saw lots of negativity on social media after the final whistle went yesterday. But you've got to remember, it's five games unbeaten now. We've had three clean sheets in the league. Um, we've moved up to second in the league. Like It's, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, yes, we're potentially losing Jal Pedro or Ismail Asar, but for me, I kind of want to believe that there is plans in place for when he's moved on, uh, these players, just like we've seen with Emmanuel Dennis. Emmanuel Dennis has left the forest and Keenan Davis was brought in the day before Dennis was actually announced to go. So I fully believe that there is plans in place and it's just a waiting game, really. It's just unfortunate. And like you said earlier, Charlie, can't wait for September to come. (laughs) (laughs) It's the longest transfer window I've ever seen. And so just one moment while it's in my head that really epitomised that togetherness yesterday. Joseph Hungo Humbo got brought on, I think it was for Mano, I might have been wrong for that. Um, Mm -hmm. And he got cut up front. He's not a striker at all. When he had to deal with a couple of long balls pitched to him and he lost it on a couple of occasions and there was one occasion I think the first time I've seen Rob proper be vocal and give him a bit of a, a bit of a rollicking but there was a moment where he lost it um, and they were breaking and he used all of his pace to run back and I just thought there's no way that's happening last season and it again Hongbo hasn't been given that many opportunities but if players like him are busting a gut um, that's exactly what we want so that was a really pleasing moment to see yesterday as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked his cameo role off the bench against Birmingham City as well. I think like he gave us that little bit of energy as well when it was tiring and he won a few free kicks as well with his pace. So I think he's going to play a big part this season and I'm excited to see what he actually does. Um, my uh, negativity towards Manai and Bayo after their performance yesterday, but from me, I, like Charlie said, their hold-up players were good. Um, they had decent games, it's just they couldn't, they couldn't finish and 
they need to be clinical. But that, you were saying to me earlier on today, that's going to come, isn't it? Once they get their one, one goal, it will start rolling and the pressure's off them and they'll be more comfortable in front of goal and they won't rush at these opportunities, especially with um, uh, Bio, that one-on-one, he probably potentially rushed. Manai as well, he's one-on-one, he kind of sliced at it a bit when he had a little bit more time. Um, do you reckon, yeah, what's your thoughts on their performances yesterday? Yeah, I think overall, I thought they, they did well. They they did the hard stuff well, but the easy stuff not so well. And listen, I, I'm, what I'm about to say might sound really stupid, but yes, their role is to score goals because that's what the position they play in. But half the battle as a striker is creating those chances in the first place. And they were doing that. So I don't have a problem. Yes, Bio should have scored in the first half. He put it straight at Woodman. And he should have really been testing him either side of him and it's going in. But he also does the hold up play really well, but uh, Bio does. Um, he, he brings others into the game really well. And Mano is very much the same. Again, he should have, you know, done a lot better with the one on one, but you know, Pedro missed a, a one on one on Tuesday night against Birmingham. So it happens. Seeing these tweets saying, I think I saw one yesterday. Um, to, to say we've somehow managed to find two worst strikers and Andre Gray and I was a success. And I'm like, come on, you have to look at the bigger picture. There's too much negativity on Twitter at the moment. And they're just ju- quick to jump at these players. And it's so unfair. I think, like I say, other than scoring goals, which they, it will come for him. Manoy's got his first goal. I, I think he'll, he'll chip in with a fair few goals. And like I said to you before we started recording, Ben, I think the, the first goal that Bio scores, he he will then click and he will get more goals. It's all about confidence. They've come over from different leagues um, and, you know, I I said to one of our mates about Manai, I can see him being that sort of fox in the box striker, pounces on loose balls and pounces on on sort of deflections and whatnot, but he he perhaps had a bit too much time to think about what he needed to do. Brilliant ball from Espria, went one-on-one and had too much time and just fluffed his lines. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to be, you know, I think the best sort of striker we saw bearing down one-on-one was Matty Vidra because he knew he was going to put it in. Manoa's not that type of striker. It might sound stupid, but I don't think he is. Uh, but like I say, as soon as Bayo gets his first goal, I think they'll they'll start coming thick and fast then. But I thought, other than scoring goals, I thought they had a good game, to be fair to them. So um, they certainly didn't warrant me the, the sort of stick they were getting on social media. No way. But Mike, do you think they're good enough to fire us to promotion? No, I don't. And I, I think the only reason we saw them playing was obviously because of Pedro and Sarn up being in the squad. I think that highlighted a little bit of the, as I think Ben said earlier, the lack of squad depth. These two aren't going to be playing week in, week out, trying to fire us back to the Premier League. They're going to be, as you said earlier, someone you bring on in the last 10 minutes to sort of rough up the defence, maybe even hold it up if we win winning 1-0 or whatnot. Uh, and I do firmly believe that if we do get rid of Saar, well, sounds like Saar's pretty much done, but if we do get rid of Pedro as well, the Pozzos will have people in place because we certainly can't pin our hopes on those two to score at least 10 goals between them, which they'll have to do to fire us back to promotion. What do you reckon, Charlie? Are they good enough to fire up the promotion or do you reckon one of them might be good enough or... And, and Keenan Davis, where do you lie with the front two that started yesterday? Yeah, I totally agree with Mike, to be honest. Um, I think we we had to deal with what what players we had available yesterday. Um, and we know that Rob likes to play with a 3 5 2 with kind of two strikers up front. So it's good to see that, that system being played. Um, mm. I totally agree with Mike that I think they will be really useful players when it comes to coming on. I think vacuum bio off the ball is brilliant, works hard, chases things down. Um, I think he'd done it yesterday before Manai's miss. He kind of got to, got to it before a defender. Yasser put in an unbelievable ball in, which Rem and I missed. Um, and I think Manai, you can see he's a big leg. He's going to hold the ball up. So when we are trying to see how a game is going to be useful, it all depends about what players we've got and what business happens in the transfer window. I know we're going to come on to Ismail Asar. Jal Pedro is the one that's... I'm scared to go on Twitter every day. <laughs> it's just I don't want to see more news. People need to just stop tweeting about it and hopefully nothing will happen. Um, but if, if it does come, I totally agree with you two. And we saw with Keenan Davis, he was in before Dennis went. Um, 
and I, I've said it, I think Davis is going to be very similar to Manai, that physical mm-hmm. player, really good link up, bringing the full backs, bringing the number 10 and the striker. But I do think we need an out and out goal scorer. Um, I think one thing's really interesting with Saab potentially going to Villa. Um, I don't know how they're going to give Cameron Archer any more minutes. Obviously, he's been a target that we've been after since the start of the window. Um, Gerard said he's going to play, but he didn't play yesterday. If they're going to bring in Saar, are they going to play a 4-2-3-1 with Saar on the right? They played 4-3-3 yesterday. So can we get Cameron Archer as part of that deal? Um, I think we need an out-and-out proven championship goal scorer, um, and that's going to put us in a great position. And I know we're all upset about losing our players, Dennis Saar and possibly Pedro, but I do think let's back Rob, get 3-5-2. That's the system he wants to play. Let's get two strikers that he wants, one hold-up player and one goal scorer. I'll mention about the Cameron Arch a bit later on when we talk about his man Saar, but yeah, yeah, I have well pointed it down. Hopefully that'll, be, <laughs> hopefully that'll be part of, um, part of the add-ons that Watford have included into the contract. Um, but that'll be great to see. Um, but some positives out of the performances yesterday, though, was Yasser Espria. Two wonderful vision of passes that he created. Uh, he, he could he should have had two assists yesterday. Uh, it was just a shame that our forward line let him down. But Mike, he was fantastic yesterday, isn't he? And it's, it's hard to believe that he's 18 years of age. He's only been in the country for two months. He doesn't speak the language, but he's putting in performances like that. I saw the... Uh, BBC Radio Free commentator tweeted earlier saying that's the best performance he's ever seen by an 18-year-old. Yeah, his maturity is unreal. As you say, he's come over to the country. He doesn't speak uh, a word of English. And I know he's improving day by day, I think Rob said. But it he, he surprised me. I said at the start of the season, I can only be, him, be I can only see him being a bit part player, coming off the bench and whatnot. But... He's started the last two games and he's been absolutely superb. He's that creative link, which is why it upsets me a little bit more that Pedro could be on the way out. Because if those two play together, then I I think they would just click like that. And I think, you know, Pedro would have no problem with goals. bit disappointed as well why he might be leaving. Because as um, Charlie said, the the way that Keenan Davis plays... He almost plays as a 10 sometimes, purely because of him dropping deep and bringing others into play. And I think Pedro would have been perfect for him to sort of play off. He would have created, you know, he'll chip in with the odd goal, but he he would have given Pedro the chance to score at least 10 because of how he plays and his link-up play. So, but Aspria is fantastic. Really did not expect him to hit the ground running as he has. But I still stick by what I said last week. We have to be careful with him. We can't yeah. just play him week in, week out. We have to nurture him. We have to give him the right coaching. We cannot let him burn out. But uh, at the moment, it's tough to, you know, you, you wouldn't drop him um, because of how well he's playing. Is it a case, Charlie, that there's a risk of, like Mike says, possibly giving him too much game time too early on in his career? Yeah, absolutely. Like the comparisons to Jao Pedro when he came in, really similar age. I think he might have even be a bit younger than Jao Pedro when he first mm. came. I know we were in the Premier League, so Jao Pedro didn't get as much chance, but he got the, that championship season under his belt and you could see how he bulked up physically. So you like to think Yasser is going to follow suit in that. And yeah, he, he was unbelievable yesterday. And apart from his two, he should have got, he could have got two assists, two beautiful balls to Manai. Actually, bios came from him chasing down and block, blocking a pass and it fell into Bio's um, pass. So off the ball is brilliant. He kind of played as the third attacker um, against the ball. So kind of matching up with Preston's back three, but he just looks about six years old. The shirt looks absolutely <laughs> massive on him. And yesterday he's kind of, he's going up against 30 year old blokes and he's trying to hold the ball off. He's doing a good job. Um, but I think yesterday he kind of went off injured because he was getting knocked about a bit. And I completely agree with Mark. We can't, one thing we cannot do, and I don't think we'll do, we can't sell Jao Pedro and go, OK, yes, sir, Esprit, you're the man. Like, not in the championship is too much of an ask. Um, let's bring him on. Let's give him cameos where he can. Let's let's get him in the gym. Let's get him beefed up. But, um, yeah, I think you're going to be playing against some, some big physical lads and you don't want any serious injury. But 
Um, really promising signs. And one thing you have to kind of say to the Pozos, it looks like they've, they've found another gem. Definitely, yeah. Let's wrap him up in cotton wool and not burn him out too early on in his Watford career. But it's definitely promising as well. Um, from an early start from Yasser Esprit, I think he's all taken us by surprise at how well he's actually adapted to English football and how well he's actually performing. Uh, I loved um, watching an interview from Rob Edwards the other day when I was like, talking to him about Yasser Esprit and he said he, he had a word with him about playing against Birmingham City during the week. And Yasser Esprit actually thought it was a three o'clock kickoff. Um, little does he know that Tuesday night midweek fixtures are evening kickoffs so they had to have a, they had a little joke about it and told him no actually we're, we're playing at 7.45 and they had a joke about it but I, I loved that about him as well it just shows like how young he is but it's class um, also another um, highlight from yesterday's game is he's keeping us in games at the moment Mike it, it's that man Daniel Batman he, he's Watford's number one he, he's rightfully so Watford's number one Um he was phenomenal again yesterday, wasn't he? His kicking could do with some work, and we all know that. Um, but he kept us in that game, didn't he? Some two really good saves, I think, first half, first five minutes. He's made a really good reaction save from um, Brown, was it? And then second half, he made another point blank save, and he tipped one past the post as well in the first half by Ledson, I think, it was believed. Um, but yeah, phenomenal performance, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And he's just proving the doubt was wrong even more, isn't he? You know, he was absolutely superb. As you said, three three game, uh, three clean sheets already out of five games. Um, and he, he, he had to be alert yesterday. So many times as a keeper where you might not be doing stuff and you have to keep your focus uh, because if you're not tested in a game, it's quick to lose focus. And then as soon as you are, it's quick to let the ball in. Preston was shooting on sight yesterday. One of my mates is a Preston fan, and I said to him at half time, I said, Has your boys got a goal bonus for if they score from 40 yards or something? Because they literally were tr- shooting from everywhere. So the fact that that says that Batman had to be even more alert than usual. Uh, but as you say, some absolutely superb saves, and he, he's won us another point, and it's he, it's got us up to second. And without him, um, we, we may have been in a, a much different position, but. He's, he's been absolutely superb and I bet he's buzzing because so many doubters of his last season. Uh, and even at times, I'll put my hand up, I did doubt him, but he's honestly showing uh, why we've kept him and why Rob's trusted him as number one. Absolutely superb. I don't know if you're a little bit concerned by his performances as well, Charlie, because I, I am, because he's playing so well. Is there a chance that maybe uh, a club might come in and want to sign him? Know it again. He, he's performing a bit too well for me. Yeah, I was expecting a, a bid to come in from Yasser Espria this morning, but no, it, it goes to show that Manchester United are interested in um, interested in him. Um, obviously, Eric Ten Hag wanted him at Ajax as well, didn't he? So that shows, obviously, the data and the numbers. He's doing well. Yeah, superb again yesterday. I think his strengths are his shot stopping. I don't think he's too bad with feet, but the one area of concern is that kind of commanding his area there was a couple of nervy moments where he kind of spilled it a couple of times um but another thing that was nice to see it was good to see a coy in the flesh yesterday and he's an absolute giant i've done it i bet his head goes over the crossbar but him before the game at halftime was working with batman kind of high five and it didn't look like there was any beef or animosity between those two so again kind of that togetherness but yeah batman he's he's keeping the shirt hasn't he he's got no complaints he's been one of our best performers this season, by far. Yeah, definitely. And that's his third clean sheet of the season as well. And definitely kept Watford in the games and won Watford points this season so far. Um, Mike, uh, what's your take on Edu Kienbi? Because I, I watched the game yesterday and I thought that was probably one of his better performances for Watford. And he just made... Normally, he, he keeps things ticking and it's lots of sideways passing with him. But yesterday, he looked like he wanted to drive forward with a ball and try and get to the box and get shots away. I, I was just, there was something a little bit more from him yesterday and I was actually quite impressed with his performance. Yeah, I mean, my first take is he's never 24 years old. No way. <laughs> like, I don't know who he's lied to there, but he's done well to keep that lie up. But um, no, nah, like you, he, he's... He's had a couple of questionable performances. He's very one-footed. That's obvious to tell. But I thought yesterday was his best game. I'm not saying he was a world beater. I'm not saying he was head and shoulders above anyone else. But I thought yesterday he had a very good game. 
solid game. You can see what he's trying to do as well. And it's some of the balls he puts through to players are, are, are very Kapoo-esque, if you like. You know, with these floated balls, these drill balls. And some of them come off, some of them don't. But, yeah, I thought he was he was pretty solid yesterday. And he probably knows that losers coming back soon. He, he may lose his space. He's got to be pulling out the stops to keep impressing Rob Edwards. And, yeah, if, if he plays like that, he, he won't go far wrong. So I was really impressed with him yesterday, yeah. What's your take on him, Charlie? Because, yeah, there's, there's lots of mixed opinions about him. Do you rate him as a footballer or you're another one who's a bit like, oh, he's just an average one? Yeah, to be honest, I think loser will be a big upgrade on him when he comes in. Um, I reckon uh, Musa Sissoko might have been his mentor when he first came <laughs> in last year because does a lot of good work, but his end product is absolutely <laughs> it's to be desired. He done a bit of skill yesterday on the edge of Preston's yeah. pot where... I think he sent a defender back to Blackpool, then to Blackburn and back to Preston like three or four times. And then just a little poor, poor effort on guard. I didn't, I didn't know if it was close or not, but it was quite weak. But you got, you got to give him his due. He's come in. He's been given the chance. He's been quite tenacious. He's quite good on the half turn. Um, I just think when it comes to kind of, he can be a bit wasteful on the ball. He can get caught on the ball a couple of times. I think if we're in the Premier League, he would have... Um, I think we've conceded a couple of goals after he's been caught on the ball, but um, I think he's done okay. I think you're right. Yesterday was one of his best games, um, but if I'm completely honest, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see Imran Luzer come back into this team because I think he's just going to take the quality up, up another level. Definitely, and with Imran Luzer coming back, would you say that would be a straight swap for Eddie Kiambi? Would he be the man who would drop out of that midfield for you? Yeah, I think so. I think the balance is quite nice in that midfield. I know Kimbe is left-footed, um, so kind of receiving the ball from the defenders and the wide men is quite, quite a nice balance. I think Hamza Chowdhury is going to be a mainstay. Another really good performance from him yesterday. Gets around the pitch so, as well, so well. Uh, tackles, he, he can pass, he can drive the ball forward. So really excited about that kind of base in the middle of um, Chowdhury on the right, loser, um, who I think can kind of go forward and he's got a lot more of an end product when it comes to mm. crossing. We didn't see too much of that last season. I think against Villa, he put a really good ball in for Dennis, didn't he, when we won at Villa Park. So looking forward to that as a midfield. And then are well, we going to get Jao Pedro just ahead of in, in the number 10? That would be a really, really nice uh, triangle in the midfield to get us going. But let's hope so. But 10 more days left of the transfer window, is it? keeping everything crossed um, but yeah um, Watford yeah nil-nil yesterday away to Preston North End we travelled back to Hertfordshire with one point added it to the total of nine for the season so far out of five games um, Mike performance wise where where do you put that performance was it one of the better performances controlled the game more I thought, I thought we we looked for stronger side didn't really like you said didn't really give Preston too many opportunities it was a bit too maybe more from distance, but better performance than Birmingham? Yeah, better performance than Birmingham, absolutely. Um, it's tough to say whether it's the better performance out of the ones we've had so far. We've, I'm still by that, I'm still dying on that hill of we've not yet had a complete performance, but that just shows that we've not had a complete performance yet yet we're second in the table and we've not lost. So I'm looking forward to when we do have a complete performance because, you know, it, it's surely got to be good. Um, but yeah, definitely better than Birmingham. Uh, I, I watched Ryan Lowe's interview on the Preston website this morning and he thinks they should have won, but uh, I think a draw was probably the fair result. We we, we had the better of the chances, uh, 100%. But um, yeah, the better than Birmingham, but in terms of best performance so far, I, I wouldn't say so, but there's we're improving game by game, I think, Ben, and that that's that's the, the, the good thing. You know, we've got a win of a win of a run, sorry, of winnable games coming up. So if we keep improving every game, we should be picking up more points and uh, solidifying that that you know position towards the top of the table. Yeah, Charlie, are you seeing the improvement from the first game of the season to, to now as well? Are you, or are you seeing the signs of Rob Edwards getting his ideas across to the players? It's it's just really him filling in those gaps with the personnel, maybe incoming-wise. Yeah, it's just been difficult because I was saying, although we, we're kind of a bit frustrated with coming away with just a point yesterday, we think 
Preston, they, they weren't great. I think they've drawn, they've had four nil nils this season and won one nil against Luton. So um, they weren't great yesterday. So a bit disappointed, but we've just had no consistent lineup. How are we supposed to create any partnerships on the field? We've had so many chopping the chain. So um, I think, I think that's a brilliant start, especially the three games that we've started off with in Sheffield United, West Brom and Burnley. It's come away where we did, I think, with seven points. And yeah, I think later on in the season, we might be disappointed with drawing to Preston and Birmingham. But um, I think the last two games where we played Rob's system of the 3 5 2, I thought Birmingham, we actually played better in terms of seeing those pa- patterns on the wide positions. I think that might just be down to having a right-footed right wing back in Gasper that kind of led to our goal. Really nice triangle between a spear and him for the goal. So, but I just think yesterday, although they had a couple of chances, which Backman did well, um, I don't think they had any clear, clear chances. I think we were the only team who looked like winning in the second half. I thought we were pretty much in control. We just didn't have enough quality in the final third. So I'm really, I'm really chuffed. I think we need to remember how bad we were last season. How much yeah. of uh, how many players have left? It must be up to, must be near ten. So, and the mood around the camp, the atmosphere of Vicarage Road. So, do you know what I mean some people worried about us doing a Sunderland and stuff like that when when it's not going well at a club? So, I think for Rob to come in, lift up the atmosphere. Um, he hasn't had an easy opportunity in terms of what players he's had at his disposal with all the speculation. So, I think we've had a really really good start, and I'm really encouraged. Yeah, and I'm really impressed with what Rob Edwards have done with his um, the tools that he's been given so far as well. Obviously, like you say, we've lost so many players through the summer. It must be so difficult to try and plan and organise for the season, not knowing what players are going to come and go. You obviously, he obviously put players into the team because they were still available, but then gradually they've, they've left. We've seen Dennis go. We've seen Saar injured or potentially rested same with Jao Pedro because of maybe moves in the background we're, we're not too sure um, and they was all big parts of the plan at the start of the season but Rob Edwards for me he's, he's done a fantastic job so far he's really got everyone together and like you say the, the mood at Vicarage Road now and um, at London Coney is so much better than last season and this is what we've wanted we've wanted our team to play with a bit of passion and for them to be that connection between the players and the fans and we've got it now um, we're second in the league when we've not, like Mike said, we've not even played that well this season. We've not had a complete performance. We've not scored many goals, but we're second in the league. It's a great foundation they've laid already for the rest of the season now. If we can bring in these replacements, I think we could do all right this season. But it's all down to who is brought in now um, and who we do lose. So we're going to find out in the next 10 days. Um, but Let's have a look now for the first outgoing, which looks like it's it's edging potentially closer. Um, is Ismail Asar, Mike, to Aston Villa? Uh, it was broken at the end of the game yesterday that he's Watford have agreed a twenty-five million pound fee for him to head to Villa Park. Um, there's add-ons added on to this as well, and supposedly a fifteen percent sell-on clause. Uh, Gino loves sticking in a high sell-on clause, doesn't he? Where we end end up getting our money back a few years later which we've seen this season um, what do you make of a deal um, Mike and are you surprised that he's maybe going to an Aston Villa because we've seen rumours of like a Crystal Palace and Villa really came out of nowhere yesterday yeah they have come out of nowhere I really did not expect it like when I uh, I think my brother sent me the links first of all and I was like has he got that right I a couple of days ago it was Leeds and then it was Palace were really interested and like you say, Villa have come out of nowhere. But I, th- I, I think the deal's best for both parties. I think if you asked people at the start of the season who they think we're more likely to keep out of Dennis and Saar, it would have been Saar because when we went down last season, uh, the previous season, we kept hold of him and he didn't have a great season last season, obviously played with injury as well. So we thought no one's going to pay the asking price. And I think to get 25 million plus add-ons is great for us. I think that's the closest we'd get to recouping the figure that we paid for him. I think some outlets report that it was 40 million we bought him for, some it's in the region of 30 million. So that's probably the closest we're going to get for the money that we paid. And as you say, there's add-ons, those add-ons could be 
anywhere. You know, there, there could be anything. So we might actually end up recouping pretty much the, the figure that we paid for him, which I think is good for the club. Um, I think he needs that move. Like I said, he, he was he, he was a bit stale last season. I know injuries didn't help, but I think it will sort of rejuvenate his career a little bit. I know that might sound harsh, but um, other than scoring from 60 yards, he's not exactly been in the games that he's played in so far. Um, so I think he needs it. Obviously, I, I don't know if Senegal qualified for the World Cup. Uh, so he, that might be in the back of his mind as well, getting a spot at the World Cup. Um, so, yeah, you know, he's been an absolutely brilliant servant. And one thing I want to say as well, for a young lad, when we got relegated, to hear that Liverpool, the champions of England, and they, I think they won the Champions League that, for, uh, that year as well, that we got relegated, to hear that they were interested and we'd just been relegated, he could have very easily said, see you later, Watford, I'm joining these boys. But he said, I want to keep my head down, play football, and I want to get Watford promoted. And without him that season, I don't think we would have got promoted. He was huge that season. So fair play to him for not having his head turned to the extent of wanting to leave or play badly. He stuck with us, got us promoted again. And I've got, I've not got a bad word to say about Saar. And I, I hope it works out for him. I really do. What's your take on this, Charlie? Good, good deal all round, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think one thing I want to mention is kind of let's. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for. I know Fabrizio Mamaro kind of tweeted saying a verbal agreement has been made and personal hasn't been done yet. I'm still waiting to hear from someone from the Athletic, either from the Villa side or Adam Leventhal, even from the Watford Observer. So. There's so many stories going around. I kind of like to wait until I hear from people who may be a bit closer to the clubs and stuff like that. Um, but I'm, I'm at peace with Sar going, to be honest. I think, like Mike said, he's been a great servant from us from, um, coming in, from coming in that goal against Liverpool. I think he was great under Nigel Pearson. Um, obviously, when we, when, when we went down, he was the person who got us up. And I think he'd done it in second gear, just shows his quality. Um Last season, the Premier Premier League, he actually he didn't have a great season, but he, he showed what he can do, especially in that first game against Aston Villa. Matt targets to those nightmares about that game. <laughs> um, and obviously, we've seen his quality from West Brom. So, I did a, I did a Twitter poll asking who, who people think will have the best career out of Dennis, Saar, Pedro and Espria and... Um, Jao Pedro won but in my opinion I think Saar has got the potential to have the best career just because he's got the end product when it comes to finishing, crossing I think he just needs to be in a in a club that suits him um, where he's going to get the right opportunities and I think he could have the best career out of all of them and maybe that's one for the listeners listening in comment who they, who they think it should be but um, I'm at peace with this one I think Villa it would actually be a good fit for him if they do play 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. Um, I think loads of Villa fans are kind of excited, but they, they know there's other areas that they need to fill. So, um, yeah, he's been a great player for us. The problem with him compared to Pedro is his contract. So if we keep him another year, he'll only have one one year left after that. So he won't go for a lot. So I think Mark's right. I think he, we got him for about 30 million. If we can get 35 plus add-ons, I think, Shake his hand. Thank you, Ismaila. We, we wish you have a, a good career. Last bit on this, I'm just a bit disappointed because I don't think we got the best out of him. And I think as a club, that's something that we need to look at. And I think that goes down to the recruitment of managers and even recruiting him in the first place when we were playing kind of 4-4-2 with Will Hughes as a defensive kind of right midfielder. So um, really good player bit gutted he hasn't reached his kind of peak or he could have done better with us in my opinion but um, I wish him best of luck and I think his mentality has been really really good Yeah me and Mike mentioned this last week about Joe Pedro or a couple of weeks ago with Adam Leventhal saying that we don't think that we've had the right coaching for Joe Pedro to actually um, bring it, bring his game on and this is exactly the same for his man as saw he was brought into Watford when we didn't even play the right formation for him under Javi Gracia mm-hmm. and he was just We've just tried to fit him into the team and just being like, go on, go out there, stick to that white line and try and whip in as many balls as you can or just run past your man. 
and we've not got the best out of him. And it's a shame that Rob Edwards is at the club now because I feel like he's probably the man who would improve someone's game like his man, Um Mike, does it does he really fit into a Rob Edwards system? That's one thing that I would say. I don't naturally see him. Is he going to be a striker or a right wing back? Yeah. That's why I think it, again another reason why it could be could be a good time to to go. Yeah, and like you say, with one year left on his contract as well, it's it's probably the right time for Watford to cash in on him. I, I know Watford still actually owe Rens some money for the signing as well because that was paid over like three four seasons. I think there's like maybe like 12 million left to pay or something. So this is probably what Watford need as well to cash in so they can finally pay off the rest of what they actually owe as well. Um, Mike, like you say, he's been a fantastic servant for Watford and he, he, we, we know nothing's been actually agreed or not yet so far, but give me some star highlights in the Watford shirt. Obviously, everyone's going to allude to that performance against Liverpool at home. Um, but if you get got any other highlights you'd want to add to that? I think the game against Reading the season we went up, it was on Sky and we won 2-0. And he scored two absolute rockets. I think he went with his weaker foot and sort of curled it into the top bins. And then the other one, Zinkenagel played him through. And how the goal was still standing afterwards, it was an absolute rocket. Um, so I would probably, that, that game definitely sticks out for me. Uh, I'm sure there's people with other memories. Obviously, the Liverpool one, as you say. But definitely the Reading one for me, it, it was the Ishmael of Sar show. He won us that game. And that was quite a, a big game as well um, to, to win because they, they were up there with us at the time and that sort of ended their motion hopes. Yeah, um, Joe Thomas says Southampton away under Flores where he scored that first goal and we mm. bottled it. It was superb that night. Um, Charlie, any other um, highlights from that season as well? Um, obviously, he... He scored the decisive penalty to send us up against Millwall as well. I know his penalty taking mm. hasn't been great, but his last three wasn't hasn't been great. But um, any other highlights from his man Osiris, his time at Watford? Do you, know, do you know when I think we got the best out of him was when we first pointed Nigel Pearson. Yeah, and we played in a four-two-three-one, and he was wide, and it was pretty Pearson like basics. But it was let's get the ball to his minor as much as possible run at your man, get crosses in. And we had that spell. I know we smashed up Bournemouth away. Uh, I think he got a couple of assists there. And did we beat Villa at home, I think? Beat Villa at home, yeah. Think maybe against Wolves. So that was a period where I thought we were actually getting getting the best out of him. Obviously, that game against Liverpool um, was brilliant. But that's one reason as well where I think he could do well for Villa. Um, if we play him with Matty Cash at right back, you, you can see the connection between him and Kiko Familia, so Matty Cash would be a great player to play with in terms of kind of that marauding right back. But yeah, really, really good player. It's going to be sad to see him go, but I think it's I think it's the right time. Yeah, and it's all about. I think we're all accepting that Sars going to move on. We just don't know when he's going to move on. Whether it's going to be in the next couple of days or the last day of the window. But it is vital that they get in a decent replacement is there anyone screaming out for you two that you'd potentially like Watford to go after to fill that gap of his Mike I know you've got I know you've got someone in mind uh, who plays for Peterborough yeah I, I wouldn't say he's more of a Saar one though because Saar obviously plays out wide but one player I do want to see come in is Johnson Clark Harris from Peterborough I mean he scored I think it was Near 30 in League One, they obviously then got promoted. He had, he was basically playing on one leg for half a season. So the second part of the season in the Championship where he was fully fit, I think he scored 12 goals in the Championship, which is still a good return for half a season, practically. And he's got five goals in five games for Peterborough back in League One. So I think he's, he's very much a similar mould of what we used to see from Troy Deeney. I don't know whether I could I, I could get away with saying that he would be the Saar replacement, but as Charlie alluded to earlier, we don't really play a system which Saar would fit into. So I think to bring someone in who's going to score goals would definitely, my choice would be um, Johnson Clark Harris from Peterborough. Yeah, Charlie, anyone screaming out for you? Yeah, I just don't know of Johnson Clark Harris. I think the only issue I've kind of got, and one thing that I've been really impressed with in our recruitment, especially in Hamza Chowdhury and Keenan Davis, I think we look. I like 
to think that I think if we go up, those boys could cut it in the Premier League. And mm. I would have happily had Hamza Chowdhury in the Premier League last season. Yeah, um, that's true. So I think we need to be ambitious. We get, we need to think we're going to be one of the teams who are fighting for an automatic promotion place. Um, I think I touched on it earlier, and I don't know if I'm taking a question away from you, Ben, but Cameron Archer, who we mentioned, who I think would be brilliant, and if we can get that part of the deal, that'd be great. Um, I saw an interesting article from the Wales Online yesterday, and um, I know Adam Leventhal reported an interest in Joel Perrault from Swansea. Swansea and him have had a really tough start of the season, but he was brilliant last season. He got 20 goals. Um, he kind of fits more of the profile. I think he's 22. He's someone that you think might have a trajectory who could take us and play with us to the Premier League. So he's someone I, I, I'd be interested in. Um, the lad from Coventry, Gokoras, is that how you yeah. pronounce him? Um, I'm not sure. Again, I think he's similar age. I think he, he'd be great. So... Those kind of players, I said on um, another video, there's a guy who's playing for, I think he's playing for Catafe now, called Enes Yuna. So I'm just looking at my notes because I don't want to butcher his name. But he's um, <laughs> he's a Turkey international. Um, I think he got 16 goals in the Liga last season. I think we should still be quite ambitious. And if we've got some money now, who, who in the market can we pay 10, 15 million pounds for? Um, I think we need to be getting someone... That Turkish player, he's always scored goals and that could be someone a bit outside the box, which the Pozos might be interested in. Well, hopefully they're watching right now and they're going to get on the old blower and put in an offer for him now after your recommendation. Um, but yeah, like you, you've brought him up a couple of times, um, Cameron Archer, um, I, I would be more than happy to get him into that starting lineup. I think he would be ideal to play off. Keenan Davis up top. I think them two would link up really well. Might where would you stand with uh, Cameron Archer going in? There's there's no proper links with it now. It's died down after Gerard said that he's he's going to stay around and feature. But like Charlie says, he's he's not got any game time at Villa. He, he wasn't included again yesterday. So is this maybe Watford with the negotiations with Aston Villa? They might be like right, okay, we're, we're willing to sell his man Asar, but can can you give us Cameron Archer in return, whether it's a loan or a permanent? Yeah, um, I mean, I'd, I'd be very surprised if they let him go permanently because they clearly rate him very highly at Aston Villa. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't turn my nose up at getting him on loan. He had a good spell at, uh, at Preston North End last year. Uh, as, as Charlie said, he, he didn't come on yesterday. Um, so he'll be frustrated. He'll want to play. He got nine minutes against Bournemouth on the opening day, which they lost. But he was on the bench for the Everton and um, Crystal Palace game. He scored seven goals in 20 games for Preston last season. So, you know, not not, not a bad return in, in a Preston team, which weren't really up there. So if you look at the quality that he'd have surrounding him at Watford, you would like to think that he would break that barrier of double figures. Especially, as we say, I think he could definitely link up well with um, with Keenan Davis. And who knows if, if Pedro was to stick about as well, we could possibly play him out wide or in the 10 or whatever. But... Yeah, he's definitely a name. If if we were to announce him, I certainly wouldn't be disappointed because he's a, he's very very highly rated and he he do, he do a job in the championship one hundred percent. Another guy who could potentially do a job in a championship. It's a champion striker, Lucas Jow has been linked with a move a few weeks back or a month back. He's actually came back from injury now and scored on his red in return the other week as well. Is that some? Would you? Would you be happy with a move for Lucas Jell? Do you reckon that he could offer something, or, or is he getting a bit too? He's getting a, maybe the wrong side of thirty now. Um, but maybe we want to be looking for younger players. Yeah, I think he's um, again. He's a bit more of a physical. I know he's got really good goals return, but I see him as quite similar to Keenan Davis in that sense. He's got a terrible injury record, hasn't he? And I think West Brom are sniffing around at the moment because I know his contract runs up and. That's kind of West Brom's um, strategy, isn't it? Kind of getting play players who are out of contract proven, but fair play to them. They've done some really good business so far this season. Um, still couldn't beat us, but um, Lucas Jow, yeah, I'm not too sure. But I know a couple of people have talked about Ben Berriton diaz who uh, Mike, Mike's shaking his head, but I know he's had links to kind of, I think, abroad of Nice, Everton, Bournemouth. I don't know if we'd be attracted for attractive enough for us but 
again, we, we've returned, especially if we get rid of Saul, we'd have brought in 90 million. So we should be in a position where we can lay down a fee for a player who we think is going to take us up and, and play for us if we do get promoted. Um, so if he comes available, that could be interesting. I think for the first time in years, Watford fans could have a twitchy transfer deadline day, which could be exciting. Normally it doesn't happen. Normally you kind of have our business, but for the first time in a while, deadline day could be exciting or scary or both for Watford fans this, this summer. Well, there is a link with um, Watford and, and Diaz, isn't there? Because his Chilean teammate, Francesca Siriota, plays for Watford. Um, so hopefully he's going to drop him a few messages and talk how highly rates um, Rob Edwards and how he thinks he'll fit into his system. So maybe it's a, a move that could materialise. But yeah, like you say, it's going to be a busy old transfer deadline day up here. I think things are going to go down to a wire. I normally try and put the day off work so I can um, watch it and see what happens um, during the day. But I've actually ran out of holidays. So I can't do it this year. And this is the one year that we're going to probably do the most business on the I'm gutted about that. But yeah, um, we'll wrap it up there, boys. Thank you so much for joining me today, um, Charlie. Um, I know it was a bit last minute, but thank you so much for coming on. We've wanted to, to get you on for a while, but it's just not never really worked out. But yeah, appreciate you coming on, Charlie. Now it's been good talking to you, lads. And let us know the next time you go into a game and hopefully see you there. We can have a, we can have a pint. Nice one. Yeah, definitely. Mike would definitely be up for that. Um, Mike, as always, thanks for coming on as well, mate. And yeah, we will be back next week. I don't think we'll do anything midweek for the Milton Keynes Stoms game. Um, but no, we'll we're going to try and get a preview out for the yeah. uh, Milton Keynes game. Definitely. Uh, and then we'll be back at the weekend. Uh, QPR next weekend, isn't it? Uh, QPR at home. So we'll be back Sunday, probably similar time, lunchtime again, uh, to discuss uh, the QPR game. And hopefully we've had maybe a sign-in or two we could discuss as well. Um, there might have been an outgoing as well. If there is, um, I might cry. Um, but yeah, we'll be back um, next week. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you liked it, like the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you later. Come on, you horns. You horns. Sports Social Podcast Network.